Hey, how's it going? Today we're going to talk about Castle. Castle is an authorization library. You can use it both server side and client side. So you can use it on a Node.js API, perhaps with Express, Nest.js. You can also use it on the client side with things like React, Vue.js, etc. Now you might be wondering why Castle versus other solutions. Generally, if you look at NPM trends, uh, the blue line here is Castle. So you can see that you know, it's one of the more popular options out there. Uh, and it's also one of the most intuitive ones, in, in my opinion. The nice thing with Castle is it also has this ecosystem of, you know, official integration packages. So for example, as it says, right, it's isomorphic. Uh, you can use this on a Node.js API, but they also have packages for uh, front end, for example, like React and Vue. And it's also got really good TypeScript support. So, you know, there's just a lot of good things to like about this solution. So from here, I'm going to go ahead and install uh, at castle slash ability. All right, let's go over the basics of how to use castle. Let's first import ability and the ability builder from castle ability. So generally, here's how you can define abilities. First, you're going to use the ability builder and you're going to pass this ability object in there. And what that will provide is this object that has these methods like can, cannot and build. Now, what you can do with this is allow you to define various abilities. So for example, what is an ability, right? So as an example, perhaps a user can read any posts, right? Imagine we're creating some kind of news website that has different articles and posts in there, right? So this, this defines that a user can read those posts. Now, once you have these definitions, you can have a bunch of different definitions using can or cannot, and we'll, we'll go into a couple different examples. Once you have all your definitions, you're going to want to return the output of build. And what that's going to do is it's going to take all of the definitions that you defined, all the abilities that you defined for a given user. And then the return of this function, which is the return of build is what we're going to use to check what access does the user have, right? So in the simple example that we have, if we define a new variable called ability and we're going to do define ability, right? So this gives back an, an ability object. And with that ability object, you can do ability that can, and you can provide similar arguments in here to check if a user can do something. So for example, we said that a user can read posts, right? So if we provide the same action and the same subject posts, this will return a Boolean of whether or not that user can read posts. Right. So if we put this into uh, a variable like is allowed and we were to return that, you can see that it says true. So that's your very basic intro to the, the general syntax. Right. So if we, for example, change is allowed to can they read settings, we're going to get false because we've never defined the ability that they can read settings. Right. So if we were to add a new one in here called read settings, you'll see that is allowed is true. All right. So with that basic syntax out of the way, uh, it's probably good to talk about what should you even be passing in here, right? So you can see that the left side is the action and the right side is the subject. So what should your actions be? Generally, it honestly can be anything, but you might want to stick with CRUD values. So for example, uh, actions, you might want to use create, read, update, delete. So as an example, if we were trying to say that a user can do any type of CRUD action, create, read, update, delete, we can define every single one of those. So for example, we can do create, read, update, delete, right? That would say that the user can create, read, update, or delete. So this effectively allows you to define the set of rules or permissions that a user can do on a specific subject. So right now we're using strings as subjects and we will talk about more advanced use cases in a little bit here, but for now, we'll just stick to strings, right? So the, with the example definitions of ability definitions that we have right now, uh, a user should be allowed to delete a post, right? So you can see is allowed is true. Now you'll notice that we haven't talked about cannot yet. Cannot is the inverse of can. So if you want to explicitly deny an, an ability, you can use cannot. So if I switch can delete to cannot delete, you can see that that updated our uh, is allowed to now false because now they can't delete posts, right? So you can do both can and cannot 
But generally, if, if my recommendation is to keep things simple, all you really need to do for the most part is define the cans and you don't really always need to define the, the inverse. So if I, for example, remove this cannot, right? That's, that's basically the same as just not having that access. So this is still false, right? So I would argue that cannot is even somewhat redundant, but there are use cases where the inverse rule is useful. And we'll talk about that in some of the later examples. Another thing to know about is, let me bring this back to can, is if you're defining a lot of, you know, CRUD operations to a bunch of things, it might be kind of a hassle to keep doing create, read, update, delete, right? There is a special action that you can provide, which is manage. And manage is basically a wildcard for any action. So if I get rid of all of these, for example, you'll see that uh, can delete is still true. Right, so having manage here basically means that, you know, anything that we provide as an action here on the can method to check their access level, pretty much you can use whatever action. It's a wildcard. And that's very useful for instances where you might have uh, an admin, right? So for example, so perhaps if a user is an admin, and let's just define this to be true for now because we don't actually have uh, a user object yet, you know, you might wanna do you know, an admin can manage posts. They can do anything basically on a post. Now, similar to how we have sort of a wild card for actions, there is also a, a, a wild card for subjects. So if you use the string all, that basically is a wild card for any subject, right? So what we have here basically says that if you're an admin, you can do anything. You can manage any, you can do any action on any subject. Right, so if I change this to, you know, let's do article, can they update an article? That's always gonna be true because this admin it basically has all the, the powers, right? All right, now let's take a step further here and really think about how we can utilize this in, in a more realistic scenario. Typically with, with authorization, it best works with authentication, right? Like you actually wanna know who the user is and define what that user has access to. So Let's enhance our function to take in a user. And you know, let's just imagine that our application can log in a user and once they're logged in, you know, we're able to have this user object that has their, their information like, are they an admin? What's their first name, last name, and, and, and stuff like that, right? For example, maybe we could enhance this to now do if user that is admin, they can manage everything. Otherwise, you know, we'll define a different uh, accesses that they have. So for example, maybe a, a typical non-admin user only has read access, but an admin user can do anything. Let's define a user object here that says is admin true. And we can provide this user in our new definability. And let's change this back to posts. Uh, as you can see, because they're an admin, it says it still says that they're allowed to update posts. But if there weren't an admin, all they can do is read, right? So let's take this a step even further. And let's say we were trying to define that a user can edit the stuff that they own, the posts that they wrote, right? So we might want to be able to do something like can update posts. And ideally, we want to be able to say only if they own it. Right, and that's actually a, a third parameter that you can pass in here, which is a condition, as you can see in, in the documentation here. And we can do something like if a posts has an author ID, we want that to be equal to the user's ID, right? So let's provide an ID to our user object. We'll give this an ID of five, right? But how do we take advantage of this condition? Well, ideally a post is an object that has a property author ID. And to better make sense of this, actually, I think we should make post singular, you know, because, you know, we're, we're gonna create a class basically for what a post is. So for example, if we were to define a class post, and let's give this a constructor to take in who's the author, and we're simply just gonna set author ID to be whatever was passed in in the constructor, all right, so now that we have a class post, imagine that we have instances of this post, right? For, for example, maybe you're, you're pulling this out of the database 
So let's say that we have a post that was created by a user that has an ID of seven. And what we can do now is with ability that can, instead of us passing in just a basic string here, we can actually pass in that object that we have. So let's replace the post string here with some post. Now we can do ability that can read that specific object and it's still allowed because remember we have, if you're a non-admin, they can still read any post, right? But they can only update the post that they own. So if we change this to update, you'll notice that they're not allowed to do that. They can't update a post that they own because this post is owned by a user with ID seven, but we said that our ID, our user ID is five, right? So if we change this to five, now we have is allowed is true. So that's where conditions uh, are, are very useful because this is a pretty typical pattern to any application, right? There's some sort of ownership of, you know, maybe you only have access to the stuff that you own. You know, another example of this is perhaps user settings, user profile, right? You can only change your own settings, your own profile, your own name, etc. All right, so let's go another step further and let's say that um, a user can update the contents of their post, but they're not allowed to publish it. Only the admins can publish that post, right? So imagine that our post now has a property like is published, which initializes to false. And we're going to say that only admins can toggle this is published. You know, maybe there's a, a scenario where admins first need to review the post before it goes live, right? Or maybe they want to edit it first but we still wanna say that the author has access to manipulate the content. So let's do content here and we'll just do, you know, an empty string. Now, how we can represent that using the can method is this, this function actually is, is pretty overloaded. So it has a couple different um, ways that you can use it. So one way is having the conditions as the third argument. Another way is having fields, a fields array as a third argument and having the conditions as the fourth, the fourth parameter, right? So you can see we have an error here that says uh, fields can't be empty because you need to define what does that user, what fields does that user have access to update? So in our case, we're saying that that person, this user can only update the content of the post that they own. Now you might be wondering how do we then represent that down here when we're actually checking the access level well, this also takes in a third parameter of field and we can do content, right? So we're saying that a, a non-admin user can update the post, the content of the post that they own, they specifically wrote, but they cannot publish it, right? They can't flip this, this Boolean here. So for example, if we change this to is published, now we're gonna say that the allowed is not, is false because they only have access to update content, right? So that's the nice thing about Castle is that it sort of is able to start simple and it can very nicely scale and evolve to the requirements of your application, All right? So that pretty much is very close to us wrapping up this tutorial. There's, there's one more thing that I wanted to show off quickly is uh, the ability to utilize messages for when you're, you have a forbidden scenario. So for example, let's say that uh, unless you're an admin, you can't delete posts, right? And we said that we can, we can also explicitly define that using cannot, we can do cannot delete post. And again, we, I, I mentioned that there's use cases for why you might wanna define the inverse in some scenarios. The, the nice thing with cannot is you can actually also define a because here, you can actually provide a message like only admins can delete posts, right? And the way you can utilize that is Castle Ability also exports forbidden error. And this is sort of a nice utility for sort of checking these types of uh, access control and also automatically throw errors if they don't have access. So for example, you can do forbidden error from user's ability and we want to throw unless they can delete some post.
right? And let's clean up our examples here a little bit. Right now, uh, this is not throwing because we have an admin user, right? We, fl we flipped this earlier. So let's make this a false. So now we don't have an admin user. So that means this rule is being enabled. Now you can see that this is throwing the message only admins can delete posts. That's coming from our because method here. And how you can utilize this in a real application is you just wrap this with a try catch block. You can catch the error that is thrown here. And you can see that this error also has that message. If you do error that message, it's that same message that we are providing up here, right? So in a real application, you, you might do a try catch and then you have these statements that will automatically throw if the user doesn't have access. Right. So for example, you can use this above, you know, if you had a delete post method like this, right, even before it gets to delete post, this is going to do the check and it's going to do, it's going to throw an error, which prevents it from getting down here. Right. So that's just another way to check ability, right? You, you know, you can of course also just do ability dot can, right. And you can do something like can delete, you know, if can delete throw, Right, so that would be sort of the manual way uh, to do something similar to what we're doing here. But that's where uh, forbidden error and utilizing that with the inverse rule and the because method becomes really handy so that you don't have to do this sort of thing manually yourself. All right, so that's honestly the basic gist of Castle. Again, like I said, it's sort of it's something that can start simple and be as complex as you need it to be. It scales very well to various types of requirements. You know, another thing to know about Castle is that in, in our example here, we're, we're technically just defining our rules statically in our code right now. In, in a more complex application, I could easily see how this type of rule set is probably stored in a database. That way, it's also dynamically manageable. You know, perhaps maybe an admin can, you know, turn on and off the different permissions that a specific user has. So how might you handle that using Castle? Well, in that case, you should know, and this is fairly well documented, you should know that uh, there's actually different ways that you can define those rules. And, you know, so we talked about using the Ability Builder class, which is generally what they, they recommend for most cases. But you can also define rules using JSON. So for example, you can see here how they're creating an ability out of an array of objects. Right. So it's just very simply, you know, action subject. And then we have the inverted here, which represents the, the cannot method and all of the different things that we can do previously, you know, with conditions and fields that can also be part of that object. So as long as you can save this type of object in your database, right, if you're able to represent this in a, in a database table or maybe you have a, a NoSQL database, then you can store this information in your database and then basically when a user logs in, you pull down their, their rules, their permissions, and then you create a new ability out of that. And then you just use that, that ability throughout your application, just like we've shown before with, with ability that can to check what access does the user have. And honestly, that's pretty much the, the gist of it. If you're interested in me covering those other packages, like the, the castle view and castle react, uh, let me know in the comments, same thing for something like express. I can do that as well. I am planning to do a, an example castle integration with Nest.js. That's something that a bunch of people have actually requested in uh, one of my older videos. So that's actually upcoming. If you're interested in that, make sure you subscribe. Anyways, guys, that's it for me today. I uh, hope you have a good one and I'll see you on the next video.